Hi everyone, Quiveen here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we are going to be looking ahead to the month of May. And for a change, we're going to start with sunrise on May Day. Here is Venus as we see it on the 1st of May. So as you can see from here in the city, Venus is certainly the last thing we're going to see. Of course, it's the last thing we'll see anywhere. But even here, as early as half five, there's very little in the sky. We can sort of see the summer triangle there, but they're quite faint compared to Venus. And Venus here at half five isn't even as high in the sky as it will get. Uh, here we are closer to six o'clock on the 1st of May. I am starting with the 1st of May because it is May Day or Bialtana. Uh, La Bialtana, the day of May, the first day of May, it is a cross-quarter day. You may remember from previous videos the cross-quarter days. The way to break up the year, uh, you can break up the year according to the solstices and the equinoxes, the quarter days, or you can go in between the quarter days and have the cross-quarter days. Uh, that is how the year was quartered um, in Ireland. It was broken up according to the days halfway between the equinoxes and the solstices rather than the equinoxes and solstices themselves. So here we are through to the first sunset of May, the sunset on May 1st. We can see the moon just in between Jupiter and Mars. So you may have noticed from the sunrise and here at the sunset that we are missing Saturn and Mercury. If we come back into daytime here, and we'll take away the atmosphere just to find those planets. We can see there is Saturn just next to Venus and there is Mercury. So Saturn here is as far from the sun as Venus. You know, if anything, it is a little further, but we're not quite seeing it in the morning. And the reason is just because it's so much fainter. If we come back to the first morning of May here, and there is Arcturus, so that is the other bright star that we will see in the sky with Venus. Here we go, there's Venus, and right underneath it is Saturn. But you can see with the orange yellow glow of the sun, by the time Saturn is a reasonable height above the horizon, it's incredibly faint. You'd need at least binoculars to see it. So Saturn will get more visible as we get later in the month because it will continue sort of out this way as we continue moving around the sun. Saturn will appear to move further and further west. We'll see that as we move a little bit later into the month. And of course, that is what we are going to do. Uh, so we're going to hop straight through to the... Uh, end of the first week, the uh, seventh day, and we will bring up our meteor showers because there is a meteor shower coming in May, in early May. They are the Eta Acarids, so we need to look for the constellation of Aquarius. Uh, there's the Antihelion, there is the Eta Lyrids, uh, so that little N shape, uh, it looks like an N with a long tail, that is Eta in the Greek alphabet. And there we go, the Eta Aquarids. So this is where the constellation of Aquarius is. And of course, we can see Sagittarius there. After Sagittarius is Capricornus and then Aquarius, even if we can't really see those constellations. So let's grab the Eta Aquarids here. And we're seeing local hourly rate of three to six, which certainly isn't great. And we're getting the peak here on the 6th of May. So yes, of course, we've gone through the night of the 7th. Here we go, that is much better. Uh, so there we go, the maximum zenith hourly rate, 40 to 85, and the current, 40 to 85, we're getting it at a four to eight here. Partly because the radiant is so low in the sky, the sun is coming up, we're viewing this from the city, all of those things are going to affect our view. So if we bring things a little bit darker, you can see we're still not getting a load in the local hourly rate, but of course, these are just predictions. We can certainly keep our fingers crossed for a 40 to 85, and we can see the parent body there, Comet 1P Halley. So you can also take a look at one of my previous videos where we looked into the future, I believe it's the 2060s or even the 2070s, when Comet 1P Halley will come back around, and it is 1P, periodical, the first periodical comet that was sort of confirmed to be periodical. It will definitely uh, come back around. And we can see there, you know, we're later into the month. Saturn's a little further ahead of Venus. We're still not quite catching it. So we'll head into the countryside where, of course, everything looks a little bit better. And just by jumping into the countryside here, well, there's Saturn. It's saying that Saturn's still visible there in the morning. But 
our local hourly rates gone up to 10 to 20 there. So getting rid of some of that light pollution, you can see the limiting magnitude is now different. That is because there is no light pollution. The light pollution isn't limiting you, but the you know glow of the sunrise coming up there certainly will. And from here in the countryside, there is Saturn visible in the morning with Venus just about. So this will get easier as we get later into the month, but it looks like you will need to be in the countryside to see Saturn in the early part of May. As we get later and later in the month, you can see there how Saturn continues to push away. There's the daytime Arietids. Um, so Aries, of course, is pretty much behind the sun at the moment. You can see that as it comes up. So the radiant of the Arietids there, it's happening during the day, which means we won't get to see very many of them. Of course, meteors during the day are very hard to see due to how bright the sky is. We're after moving significantly later in the month now, so we'll push all the way through to sunset again, just to see how different, how slightly different it is. So we can see there's Mars. It looks like, yeah, Jupiter is still just about visible. If we turn around here, we're still just about getting Jupiter there in the evening. So you can see if we pull back a little bit, you know, it's behind the tree there, but yeah, if that tree wasn't in the way, it would be visible. But of course, that means it's so low in the sky, it will be blocked out by a lot of trees and buildings. We still at least have Mars. Here are the, uh, I assume the, uh, not the Theta Herculids, uh, but one of the other Herculids uh, up here. So we can see they've only got, uh, they're variable, but they're generally quite low. So we're probably not going to get a lot from them. And we can see that they're not peaking until June anyway. So it really is the Eta Acroids. They're the ones that we really have to look forward to, even though there are other meteor showers running. That's the one that's peaking, and most importantly, the one that's peaking where we get to see it at nighttime, even though we only get to see it really in the morning. So we'll come back a little bit, of course, we are getting closer and closer to summer time. So waiting for all of that sunset glow to leave the sky, you know, brings us pretty close to midnight already. And that will only get uh, worse or better, uh, depending on your view. Uh, once we get into June, of course, it will essentially be daytime all night long once we're into June. Uh, we can see here quarter to midnight and already basically all of the Milky Way is there. Summer Triangle is completely above the horizon and we have Scorpius. So by the time we're through to a little after midnight, yeah, here we are at half two in the morning. Uh, well, 20 to three in the morning, so a lot after midnight, but it's completely dark. We're not getting that little glow of sunrise coming up over the north just yet. It will be another month or so before that happens, but we're definitely getting all of the Milky Way and the core of the Milky Way is clearly visible there. Still at least sort of an early morning phenomenon, but we are getting the glow of the Milky Way nice and clearly. And there's Saturn just next to the moon. So Mercury at this point would be after sort of curving back around, uh, getting closer to the sun, whereas Venus is still pushing out and it will continue pushing out until we get to the very end of the month. So this is Venus's greatest elongation. Venus's greatest elongation, its greatest Western elongation, which means we see it in the East. That is coming up uh, once we get through to the end of the month. And here we are at the end of the month, the sun is rising, but in the countryside, at least, you can still see the square of Pegasus. The whole square of Pegasus is there. We can see a lot more of Andromeda. So this is a good comparison to our view overnight in April. We didn't quite get to see these stars. Even in the countryside, the square of Pegasus was getting pretty wiped out. But Saturn is now nice and clear. We can see it's a lot further ahead. So it's there in not complete darkness, but almost complete darkness uh, at about half three in the morning. And then we can see Venus staying with us at its greatest elongation, the last thing to leave the sky, up until about quarter past five. So we can see a big difference there between the beginning of the month and the end of the month. Even though Venus is further from the sun here at the end of the month, it's disappearing almost half an hour earlier, even in the countryside. And that's because we are still getting closer to summer. We're now really getting closer to the summer solstice. We have passed the quarter day between the equinox and the summer solstice, uh, between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. So we're really coming up to summertime here. And that is going to really change our view of the sky. You know, here we are at the very end of the month and it's only quarter to two when we have the glow of the Milky Way stretching across the sky. And if we keep pushing back in time, Yep, the sun is just going down there and we can see the entire summer triangle. So the last day of May, we'll bring it forward so it's really the last day of May. Uh, the last day of May, we're pretty much going to have the summer triangle in the sky as the sun is going down. 
which is our sign that we're getting back into summer. And of course, that's really going to start uh, once we're into next month. But we have all this to look at this month. So we've still got Jupiter and Mars in the evening, but Jupiter will really be gone by the end of the month. You know, we can kind of see it there just above the sunrise. That's going to be incredibly, incredibly tricky. Mars is still with us for the entire month and we can see it there not in the sky for very long once we're through to the end of the month saturn is coming back and venus is just still with us all of that plus the Eta Acarids to look forward to. So I hope you get to see some of these things in the coming month. If you enjoyed this look ahead, well, I do a look ahead like this almost every month. So as well as liking this video, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel if you'd like to see more. You can also read some of this information on my website, queveenscontent.ie. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you back here next time.